Hi, the next new one patch is around the corner and we haven't really talked about new best in slot gear yet. I've made a comparison between elemental aversion and choking fortification, talking about the general direction of best in slot, but in this video I want to go into more specific detail and want to talk about some other things that may affect best in slot as well. So the general idea that most people seem to have at the moment is that straight up replacing your shirking fortification with full elemental aversion is your best option and I think there are some limitations to that. The first limitation is that this is mostly true under the assumption that most of the damage you will be affected by next patch will be ranged elemental damage. And that's because a lot of sources of damage in New World just happen to be ranged elemental damage. You have weapons that mainly deal ranged elemental damage, such as the Ice Gauntlet, the Void Gauntlet, the Fire Staff and the Life Staff. Obviously not all of them dealing the same amount, but that's the general idea. Then you have some extra abilities that also deal elemental damage, ranged elemental damage, like for example Gravwell now, as well as the Blunderbuss Splitting Grenade. So there are a lot of contributing elements here. Along with that, weapons with an elemental gem that have their damage split are also reduced, or the split side is reduced. This is for example true for the musket, which also benefits from the 150 int perk, and also on this patch, on the previous patch, benefited from having the ranged damage falloff not be applied to the elemental gem portion of the damage. If you're running the blunderbuss in a mage build, you're also going to be inclined to use an elemental gem to make use of the int scaling, so you don't have to invest much into strength. But there are some limitations to elemental aversion. For example, with the musket, the benefit of using an int gem will go down significantly next patch, simply because the elemental gem damage falloff was fixed and it now has normal damage falloff like any other projectile part of the weapon. Also, going full elemental aversion assumes that the biggest threat next patch are going to be mage weapons, which is not unlikely considering the fire staff is getting massive buffs, but it's also not necessarily the case. We won't know the exact meta until the next patch is out and it might be different between OPR, Wars and 3v3s anyways, so it might be that you have to gear completely differently for all of those, whereas at the moment tricking fortification is just kind of this tool that works for every option, it's just this jack of all trades. Just to give you a scenario here, for example imagine if you're playing Outpost Rush and you have fully slotted elemental aversion and you're running mostly onyxes but also a few opals so you can avoid some melee damage from void blade users or from melee users with int gems. You might think you have all of your bases covered at this point but then there suddenly is a bow user or a musket user which I think will still be very much viable without an int gem. They just do pure physical range damage. The benefit in them using an int gem is going to be lower anyways, so if everyone is going to run elemental aversion, why would they want to run a gem that reduces their damage when they can run others that increase their damage more directly? If you've purely invested into things like elemental aversion and flame protection, then you're just going to take more damage in this situation. But not only that, Fusion Thunder also did an interesting test recently to see which ranged elemental abilities actually count as ranged elemental abilities, with the result that many dot abilities only get the reduction on their first tick, and some abilities, like Ice Spike for example, simply don't count as ranged attacks for elemental aversion at all. I will link his video in the description. Also, thanks to Punk AF who sent me the data mining for the Ice Corner specifically, where you can see all of these abilities here not being labeled as is ranged, so many of the effects are simply not ranged on the Ice Gauntlet for the purpose of elemental aversion. Now some effects are more weird and have additional things that need to be tested in game, like Splitting Grenade for example. I didn't have time to do all of that unfortunately for all weapons, but generally speaking, the Ice Gauntlet especially is one that avoids a lot of the elemental aversion effects, whereas the Fire Staff is mostly reduced. While I expect that damage-wise the Fire Staff and Blunderbuss are going to be the biggest threats in terms of what can be reduced by elemental aversion, I would still say that Ice Gauntlet or Ice Spikes in particular is a scary ability that would be nice to be reduced as well. So at this point it should be pretty clear that elemental aversion is not a one-size-fits-all solution. And obviously how exactly you're gearing will also depend on what type of role you're playing and who you're most likely to be attacked by. If you're for example playing a healer, you're probably not as likely to be attacked by mages than if you were, say, playing as a melee in a clump. But I think we can still find a general middle ground here that should benefit you in most situations. In order to achieve that, we need to look at a lot of numbers. I've made this as simple as possible and literally just show you the numbers that are exactly relevant here, but still gonna be quite a lot, so here's a quick overview of how this whole thing looks like. At the top you can see we have our armor type, which is light, medium or heavy, and then we always have balanced armor load. Now technically I think there would be benefit here in having physical screwed armor, 
and lower elemental resist and offset that with elemental aversion. However, I think it's too difficult to find that type of gear consistently, especially if you're looking for best in slot gear. Most of the gear you will find is typically not rolled weighed one way or another, or maybe you find one piece that is weighed in a particular way. But generally, you will have a lot of pieces that are balanced. And as long as that's the case, we're just going to look at balanced pieces because that is what the vast majority of players will be able to get. Under that, our starting point here is 0% Fortify. This is the new Fortify, which scales off your armor. And then our standard armor values, 838 in light, 1521 in medium, and 2076 in heavy. Next we have our damage absorption, which is labeled as gems here, because it mostly comes from our gems. There are exceptions, but we'll talk about that later. And we have 10% here, which means you have half elemental gems and half physical gems, so 10% reduction each. So this would be a super balanced standard loadout with no base damage reduction either. So literally just you running around with no aversion, getting hit by something, what does it look like? In this case, in light you have 34% mitigation, in medium you have 46%, and in heavy you have 53%. The effective health values are underneath as well, roughly 20,000 in light, 24,000 in medium, and 28,000-ish in heavy. By the way, I made all of these tests with XR spreadsheets, so thanks to him for unknowingly helping with this video. For reference, this is what things look like if you add in shirking fortification on the new patch. We're not comparing to the old patch anymore, just what things are like on the new patch. Mitigation here goes up to 37, roughly 38% in light, uh, we have 50% in medium, and 57% in heavy. This results in one to 2,000 extra effective health. It's not anything massive anymore, especially because you have to keep in mind that sugar fortification has a limited duration and is only activated after dodging, so it's not something you are guaranteed to have all the time. On the other hand, these are the numbers for fully slotting elemental aversion with no elemental gems against ranged elemental damage. So here we have a 41% mitigation in light, 51 or 52% in medium, and 58% in heavy. That means compared to shirking fortification, we get more than 1000 extra effective health in light, but in heavy the difference isn't all that big, it's around 600-ish. With shirking fortification being a pretty good all-rounder, it actually keeps viability at least for heavy armor here, though in heavy you also generally tend to dodge less. On the other hand, here's our damage reduction against physical attacks if we are going full elemental aversion, but are slotting full onyxes. We have 42% mitigation in light, 52% in medium, and 58% in heavy. Again, the difference in heavy is by far the smallest here. In light, it's much, much better. But doing this type of loadout would mean that ice spikes, void blades, as well as elemental damage parts from melee weapons would cut right through us, and that is not ideal. So I have an alternative suggestion. Take a look at this. This would be running 5 onyxes in your gear. Now it's rounded to 13%, but it's actually 12.5% mitigation from the gems. So you can see we're looking at 36% mitigation in light, 47 or 48% in medium, and 54% in heavy. Compared to shirking fortification, that's around 500 effective health less in light and roughly 1500, a little bit more than that, in heavy. In other words, not an absolutely massive loss. In the build suggestion that I give you, this is the damage you take from somebody dealing pure melee damage. On a side note, this is what it would look like if you threw in a slash protection amulet, but that's not what we're going to do. Instead, we're going to look at the other side of this loadout, which is four pieces of elemental aversion and three opals when it comes to reducing ranged elemental damage. In this case here, we have a massive 43% mitigation in light, 53 in medium, and 59 in heavy. So our survivability against ranged elemental attacks will be very, very good. Having three elemental gems obviously results in somewhat of a decent defense against melee elemental damage too. We have 32% mitigation in light, 45% in medium, and 52% in heavy. Not the best values comparatively, but still nothing terrible when you keep in mind that most damage sources are at least not purely melee elemental damage. So where does this all lead to? Our loadout has five onyxes, three opals, four elemental aversion. We have one space left, which we're gonna use for physical aversion. By the way, physical aversion at this point should stack normally as well, like elemental aversion, so that should not be a concern either, if you wanna have more of it. And in addition to that, we're gonna use a thrust protection amulet. This will make sense in just a moment. Let us look at the numbers here first. We see our mitigation here from gems. This includes the amulet as well. This counts under absorption as well. 23%, 22.5%, as well as a base damage reduction of 4%, meaning we have 46% mitigation in light, 55% in medium, and 61% in heavy when it comes to ranged 
thrust damage. Against melee thrust damage, you just have to take out the 4% base damage reduction because the ranged version would not work against that. So why thrust ward? Most melee weapons are getting nerfed significantly next patch. The damage of the Warhammer is gonna get gutted all around, and even the Great Sword and the Great Axe are taking pretty significant hits to their damage output potential. Similarly, the Hatchet will be much less used and less of a threat as well. At the same time, the Blunderbuss barely got any nerfs compared to other weapons, so it will be very strong. My prediction is that the bow will definitely stay viable and the musket will likely also stay viable. Along with that, the spear happens to have gotten buffs as well. So there are a ton of thrust weapons that are going to be very good, and even the rapier does thrust damage. I originally thought that flame protection would be the best option because it works against the fire staff as well as the blunderbuss splitting grenade, but overall there is way more physical thrust damage in the game than there is fire damage specifically, so I think it makes way more sense to counter that as a whole, especially next patch when a lot of the slash damage weapons are just significantly less impactful. And even weapons like the longsword and the greatsword get quite a fair bit of their damage from thrust damage too. And thrust protection is great in so far that it covers all relevant ranged physical damage bases, which means it pairs very nicely with elemental aversion. It doesn't work quite as well the other way around. If you get a lot of physical aversion against ranged damage, there's not really an all-rounder protection that reduces all magical damage the same way. You'd have to do that through gems and then you lose out on the potential to use onyxes to reduce merely physical damage. But generally I think for most armor weights, most weapons, you're going to be very well off opting mostly into elemental aversion, so three to four pieces, then some physical aversion along with that, and then thrust ward, and then gems that are slightly way towards the physical side, so five onyxes, three opals, should be roughly the balance that you want to go for. Obviously if you find a good piece that has the other type of aversion and you want to switch around a little bit, you're flexible, it's not going to make or break the build. I also think it's worth keeping in mind that Shirking Fortification is not completely trash, but rather it's just not worth it in light specifically. In medium, I think if you throw in one or two pieces of Shirking Fortification, or just keep some of the pieces you already have that are generally good, that is not the end of the world. You may not necessarily be min-maxing the best, but you're going to be dodging a lot anyway, so you have frequent uptime on that, and through that I think you can get a similar benefit compared to going aversion, especially while you're gearing for whatever your optimal gear set is. In heavy, I would even say that Shirking Fortification is still very much a good perk, especially in wars, for example, where you have constant damage coming your way. It is obviously less effective in situations where you're getting sniped from a distance and maybe miss the dodge on the first shot because then you won't have the fortification, whereas aversion is just more of an ever-present thing. But Fortify for Heavy is definitely still a good all-rounder when it comes to reducing damage, so I wouldn't write it off. Also, again, this heavily depends on your role. If you're a bruiser that is heavily in the middle of fights in a war most of the time, then you may still need slash protection depending on what is mainly hitting you. This depends on how the meter develops. If everyone is running around with blunderbusses, then obviously you want to go for thrust protection as well. But if you're still primarily getting hit by maelstroms, then you might want to opt into slash protection instead. And in that case, you may have to gear a little bit differently. You may notice that you're not getting hit by mages that much and maybe you need more physical aversion and less elemental aversion. But that's something we can't tell until the patch is actually out. But for now, I'm definitely looking forward to the market for physical aversion pieces being ruined as much as the elemental version market already is. And speaking of ruined markets, we have a lot of patch pep to talk about in the next days, and I also want to talk about Diablo 4 a little bit, so if you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. If you'd like to support me more directly, consider joining my Patreon, that will also give you access to the Patreon Discord, where you can chat with me at any time. Thanks to my patrons for supporting this video, and thank you for watching. Deuce Loth, out.